Hello, my name is Yashika Mahatre and today I will be talking about the Blowfish algorithm. Uh, before 1993, there were different algorithms available like the DES and the IDEA. However, these were patented by companies and were not allowed to be used by the general public. Also, they were slow and not secure enough and took a lot of time. Therefore, in 1993, Bruce Nair came up with a new algorithm called as the Blowfish algorithm and placed it in the public domain. So it was used for the, so it was available to everyone. This algorithm is based on the symmetric key encryption standard and follows the FISA structure. The FISA structure is basically when the encryption and the decryption follow the same pattern just in the reverse order. Uh, the build block size that Blowfish allows is 64 bits, which is better than DES, which allowed only 56 bits. The key size is however variable. It can go from 32 bits to 448 bits. Now, in case the key size is not defined, the default key size is set to 128 bits. In this algorithm, the plaintiff has to go through a number of rounds and for Blowfish, the total number of rounds is 60. Now, let's understand the working of the Blowfish algorithm, but before that, we need to understand these three important components. The first component is the key array, which is a collection of subkeys, a total of 18 subkeys, which are derived from the original key itself and they are numbered from p1 to p18 the function f is a function that comprises of the s boxes now these s boxes are 32 bits of blocks that are also derived from the original key and have 256 elements each okay now this is the working uh, this is the complete algorithm this is the function f and this is the mathematical representation of the algorithm okay so what happens is, uh, we have a plain text of 64 bit, which is divided into two parts. This is a very first step, where we divide it into two parts of 32 bits each. This becomes our L1, this becomes our R1. The second step is to XOR the L, that is the L1, the first uh, part, with the key of that round. The R here, if you can see, stands for the number of rounds. So since this is our first round, the key will be the first one. We XOR it, and two copies of this value are created the first value goes through the f function and the second value is just kept here so the value that goes through the f function for our third step what happens is it is xor with the right hand side part of the plain text okay and then we get a value these two values that is the copy here and this value are swapped to create l2 and r2 respectively this whole is a complete one round and there are 16 such rounds. So there will be 15 more rounds like this. And after the last round, we have one final step that is remaining. What we first do is undo the swap that was done to get, a, get us the values of L16 and R16. After this, uh, there are the remaining two keys are used to be XOR with L16 and R16. This is called as output whitening. And then we get a ciphertext of 64 bits. Okay, now let's look at the function f. So before we understand, we need to understand what the sbox does. The sbox, what it does is it maps the 8 bits of data to a 32 bits of data. Okay, and these three uh, annotations are basically, this means addition, this means XOR, and this is again addition. So uh, the value after XORing here is a 32 bit value that goes into the function, and then it is divided into four equal parts of 8 bits each. After going through the S-box, we get 32 bits of output. Then after this, what happens is the value from the first S-box is added to the value of the second S-box. The value that we get here is XOR with the value that we get from the third S-box. After this, the value produced hence is added to the value that comes from the fourth S-box. And that is how we use this value here to XOR it with the right hand part of our plain text. And that is how the function works. Now this is the mathematical representation. Li is the next round, the left hand side of the next round. F is the function. Li minus one is the current round. Uh, Pi minus one is the key that is used for the current round. And Ri minus one is the right hand side of the current round. Uh, this is the same thing. That is how R is found out. For R, what we do is R of the next round, that is we XOR the value of L minus one. That is the left hand side of this uh, this round with the key and then we get an R okay now for the final step that is the output widening what happens is L16 and R16 are XOR the remaining two keys P17 and P18 in order to get LR L17 and R17 which is the ciphertext now 
The security services that it provides are confidentiality and integrity. However, it cannot provide uh, non-repudiation and authentication since it follows a symmetric key structure. Thank you.